Holy Spirit, we welcome you today. We welcome you as the living flame. The living flame in us. The pillar of fire by night, the pillar of cloud by day. We welcome you this morning as the living flame in us, on us, and for us. Burning up, burning through, and burning out. Baptize us with your flame today, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are what love looks like. You are what God is doing in the earth. You make all things new. And we just want to say, welcome, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this house. We welcome you upon every life. We welcome you in our city. We open up. We open up the gates. We swing wide the doors and say, come, King of glory. Holy Spirit, have your way. Glorify Jesus today. Mm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm. You know, Jesus, when talking about the Holy Spirit, he said, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I'm so thankful that he's not been given in part, he's been given in fullness. But I'm still gonna ask for more. I'm gonna be thankful for what I've seen. I'm gonna be thankful for what I've heard. I'm gonna be thankful for what I have, but there is more. And so if you want more today, why don't you just begin to ask the Father. Ask the Father, how much more is there? How much more do you have for me? How much more of you can I walk in? And how much more of you can step into me today? We yield to you today, Holy Spirit. As much as we want more of you, you want more in us. And so we give you all of us today. How much more? How much more? How much more? will the Father give of the Holy Spirit to those who ask? We ask you. We know that when we don't have in life when we don't ask. And so just we just want to say we ask. Lord, we're going to be those people that just keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. The more that we have of you, the more that we want, and the more of you that we have, the rest, the, the less this world has to offer. Lord, we cast aside every counterfeit today. We lay aside anything less than all of you. We make room today, Holy Spirit.
It's not heavenly places apart from her earth. It's heavenly places in the earth where the kingdom of God can come, where the kingdom is manifest, where the gospel is preached to the poor, where the blind begin to see, the deaf begin to hear. Those who are bound are made free. Those who are sick are made whole, not just healed, but whole. And then he said in Ephesians 1.11 that the Holy Spirit has been given as an earnest, a down payment for the full possession that God desires. And God, I thank you for divine deposits. But we're not just here for a visitation. We're not here for a, a drawing near and then drawing away. We were born for habitation. We were born for heaven. And Paul began to pray for them. He said, because of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for others, I pray that the Father of glory, and that means you're a son of glory, you're a daughter of glory, there is glory in your DNA, would grant to you that he would give to you and not take back spirit of wisdom and revelation that would enlighten the eyes of your understanding you see because apart from understanding there is no fruit Matthew 13 23 says the good ground is he who hears and understands and produces fruit 30 60 and a hundredfold Understanding is a ministry of the Holy Spirit in Isaiah 11. But he said the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. That the scales of how you've looked through your situation would begin to fall like Saul when he became Paul. And that you would see the exceeding greatness and glory of his riches his inheritance in the saints. Not something he's holding back for the future, but for the deposit that was given to you of the day of salvation when you were born from above. And that we would know. We would experience the exceeding greatness of his power in us according to the working of his mighty power on us. So Holy Spirit, Spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, spirit of understanding. Enlighten our eyes in this year of vision that we would see the glorious inheritance of Christ in me. God, I thank you for the exceeding greatness of your power in each and every one of us. But Lord, we ask for a greater manifestation of your power upon us and toward us. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for nitro, nitro and glycerin moments. Lord, even as we've set apart this month to be a month of fullness, a month of the oil of overflow and the fragrance of fullness, whatever you want to do, we yield to you. Whatever you want to do, we yield to you. Whatever you want to do, 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 whatever.
Isaiah 11, 2, that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and he's in you. You are his place of agreement in the earth. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and the Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of of the Lord. It says that he would not live by the seeing of his eyes in verse 3 or the hearing of his ears, but his delight would be in the fear of the Lord. His delight, his posture. And that word delight actually means to be flexible. That when he moves, we move with him. That when, when he touches, we allow the full work of transformation. And then in verse six, he says, a child shall lead them. A child shall lead them. And I believe that there's, a, there's an antidote to childishness in the world, immaturity, even in the body that comes through the posture of being childlike. Being so confident in who he is, his heart toward us, his heart for us, that we're no longer tossed to and fro by the winds and the waves. And we become the expression of his peace to the storm. God, I thank you of a, for a people of peace. God, I thank you, said in Isaiah 55, that we would go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Holy Spirit, I... I even just feel an invitation for an exchange of earthly emotions for heavenly emotions, for earthly thoughts for heavenly thoughts. For earthly perspectives for heavenly perspectives, that we would be those who set our mind on things above, not things of this earth, because we are hidden with Christ in God. of the Holy Spirit become our emotions. You see, the fruit of the Holy Spirit outlines the emotions of the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is what love looks like. And joy is the primary emotion of the Holy Spirit. Peace. 
He's never seen a storm he couldn't stop. Patience. Man, he is so patient. He's not in a hurry, but he's always brooding. He's always looking. This is the eyes of the Lord are always searching. The seven eyes, the seven spirits, the seven flames that are burning are always searching. Holy Spirit, we want to let your eyes cease from their searching today. That you would find a resting place in the earth. Jesus said that the birds have nests and foxes have holes, but the Son of Man is looking for a place to lay his head. And so, Holy Spirit, I just invite a childlikeness, a wonder into the body. so that we can be yielded to Jesus as our head. The governance of God, the eyes of God, the ears of God, the mouth of God, the thoughts of God expressed through us. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. I love that when you step into the room, when you come into a situation, that you glorify Jesus. So come and do all that you are desiring to do, all that you want to do in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. How many of you are excited for today and what God has for you this month? Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He's here. Why don't you find a few folks and just greet them and let them know how thankful you are that they're here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Thank you, Father of glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to so many who are joining us online this morning. We genuinely are so thankful, hallelujah, that you are here with us today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's going to be one of those, I was going to say one of those days, but I, I, I think that we're, ha, 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 ha. Hey, 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 hey. I think it's going to be more than just a day. Mm, I want to see him have his way. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, ha, 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 hallelujah. You got to love it when your executive and worship pastor is in the fetal position and your wife's curled up on the floor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm, hallelujah. 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 Mm, hey, hey, ha, 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 ha. Hey, 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 ha, 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 ha. You can have as much fun as you want to have today. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Royal wine. Royal. 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 Mm. What else do they serve at the King's Way? Hallelujah. Royal wine in abundance. Hallelujah. 
Mm. Golden vessels, golden vessels, golden vessels. Ha, 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 ha. Golden, golden, golden. Golden, golden, golden. You see, sometimes we make the, I don't want to say mistake, but sometimes just we're trained to, to see before we taste. But listen, you don't see until you taste. See, an explanation doesn't bring you into an experience. It can help you understand the experience you have. Acts 1.1, it says, this is the account of what Jesus came to do and to teach. And I love teaching, hallelujah. But I love (laughs) doing. Amen? And see, when you have an experience that's explained, an explanation for your experience, that becomes an outward expression, hallelujah. Mm, Hallelujah. Mm, taste and see, taste and see, taste, 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 taste. Said in Esther 1, they had a, a party that lasted six months. They called it the banquet of the king, hallelujah. And at this banquet, they served royal wine in abundance. <laughs> it says royal wine in abundance according to the generosity of the king. And see, our king is not stingy. He doesn't give out drinks of his spirit in Dixie cups. Hallelujah. He made more wine than they ever could have needed. Hallelujah. He's not trying to meet a quota. He's not trying to hold back. He doesn't even know what the word recession means. Hallelujah. He's a God of extravagance. He is the God of more than enough. More than, 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 more, 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 more. And see, the more we experience, the more we know him. Every experience brings us into a greater understanding of who he is. Hmm. Every touch reveals his likeness in new ways. Hallelujah. And at this party, we are in an Esther season. At this banquet, this feast, hallelujah. I lo- Listen, I love times of fasting, but don't miss out on the feast. Amen. I love when it's time to put some things away so that you can make room and become more sensitive but sometimes there can be what's called a force fast. You see, Saul, King Saul, he, he commanded a fast upon his army, and it made them weak. And their strength was diminished in the day of battle, but Jonathan was a king's kid. Hallelujah. And 1 Samuel 14, he missed the meeting and showed up for the battle. And all of a sudden, he looked around, and everybody was weak, and their eyes were, were faint. They couldn't even see because their strength failed them. And see, the religious spirit would try to force you into living without instead of delighting yourself with. And it said he took his staff and he he took his uh, rod in his hand and he saw there was a, a, a honeycomb. And he touched the honeycomb and he put the honey to his mouth. And it says that his, his countenance was brightened and his eyes were enlightened. He, he found strength in the honey. And I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost has some honey for you today. Come on, he has some honey. He has some honey. He has some honey for you today to taste and to see. And see, even the thing where you are afraid of the sting of death in times past, when you taste the honey, you recognize that what you went through to get to where you are was worth it hallelujah because you became something you became someone in the process and it said in Esther 1 that there was actually drinking laws there was reg there was a a governing understanding and and it said that the drinking was not compulsory it said that you didn't have to and this is a you don't have to house this is a you get to home hallelujah Hallelujah. It said that it was not mandatory. They were not forced to drink the royal wine. They were not forced or, 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 or made to receive the generosity of the king. But it said that each man, each woman could have as much as their heart desired. And so you're filling what you get 
what you receive is always in a direct proportion to what you ask, what you, the increase of your capacity. Not only what you can carry, but also what you can consume and contribute. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where are my drinkers at? <laughs> Cue the religious spirit. <laughs> Cue the YouTube comments. Hallelujah. But guess what? The whole planet is crying out for him. And too often we can become more concerned with what people think of us than what he desires to reveal in the earth. Hmm. 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 It goes on in Esther 1. Because, listen, if, 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 if they're serving a royal wine, I want to, okay, how do you, how, like, I'm a big, okay, if this is what God is doing, how do we partake? How do we partner? Amen? I don't, I don't ever just see a prophetic word or an invitation as being an absolute. It's always potential. And we've got to position ourselves. We have to posture ourselves. And it said they serve this royal wine in golden vessels, each vessel being different from the other. Look to your left. Check out that vessel. Now listen, if it's not your significant other, don't check it out too long. You might get elbowed on the right side. Now turn over to your right side and check out that vessel. You are the golden vessels. He is the generous king. But he's wanting to pour out the royal wine in abundance today. You're golden. You're golden. This is your golden year. Hallelujah. You are golden. And you are a vessel. You are a vessel. It said in Proverbs 25, 4, in the New American Standard, it says that when the, when the dross is removed from the silver, dross is just impure, impurities, imperfections, and see, the silver can't make the dross leave. It has to stay present in the fire. It's the fire. It's the living flame that brings those things in us out. Dross also means the thing that would cause you to turn back in the day of opportunity. It's the fear of loss, less, never. The fear of man. It's the, it's the shame of your past that keeps you from the honor of your present and the glory of your future. It says when the dross is removed from the silver, the silver is sent to the silversmith. And what does the silversmith look for? His reflection. He looks for himself in the silver. And when the silversmith sees him in the silver, it says that he makes that silver a vessel fit for a king. And he is our king. But Revelation 1.5 says that we are kings and priests. See, we minister to him, that's the posture of a priest. But then we rule and reign with him, that's the likeness of a king. And that's not reserved for some coming last day season. That was the original mandate given in the garden, and God never took it back. To be fruitful, to multiply his image in the earth, to subdue the earth which doesn't mean to lord over, but to bring everything into his lordship, divine order, and have dominion. You see, the kingdom is simply his dominion, the dominion of the king in the earth. You are a heavenly place. Philippians 3.20 says, you're a citizen of heaven. And a lot of times people like to put things before American and their nationality, but listen, you're a heavenly American. You're an ambassador of God. You have dual citizenship. You're in heaven and on earth, and heaven is in you. A lot of times people think that heaven is just where we get to, where we go when we die. But Jesus said eternal life is to know the Father, and the Son whom he sent. And so eternal life doesn't begin with your last breath. It begins with your next one. 
That's why Jesus in John 20, he <laughs> breathed on the disciples and he said, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive Holy Spirit. And see, before you can inhale, you have to exhale to make room. And I think a lot of times we've just been living from the good instead of living in the God. So just as a prophetic act, why don't you just have a great big old, you know, there was a movie years ago about waiting to exhale. Why wait? The sooner you exhale, the deeper you inhale. Amen? So why don't you just blow out? Man, he's here. I feel him. Why don't you exhale and inhale? See, because that's how you drink. Out with the bad air, in with the God air. Ha, 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 ha. Out with the good air, in with the God air. Out with the less, in with the more. how you drink. It's how you drink. It's how you drink. Psalm 81 10, he said, I'm the Lord, I'm the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt. I delivered you from your past. Open your mouth and I will fill it. I will fill it. I will fill it. Closed mouths don't get filled. Ho! Ha 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 ho 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 mm. man I feel that electricity coming in the room ha 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 mm 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 see the Greek word for, for spirit is pneuma it's breath it's wind he makes his angels winds and he makes his ministers flames of fire. And I had an encounter this morning with an angel named Joy. I was meditating on that you will go forth with joy. And I've just always seen that as a posture of the heart. But joy came into my room as a heavenly host, as an angelic being. I was like, oh, you're going with me. I'm going with joy. I'm going with joy in this season. And as I go with joy, together we're led forth with peace. You see, because names reveal nature. And I think sometimes we just think that joy is a what, but joy is a who. Hallelujah. And Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit is the joy of the Lord. He is what love looks like. He makes all things new. And when joy steps into your room, when joy steps into your life, all of a sudden the old things, the time of mourning comes to an end and the time of dancing is upon you. When joy comes into your life, no longer are you limited to natural might, to natural strength or natural power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. How much more? How much more? How much more? How much more? Well, my Bible says that the revelation of Jesus Christ, the, 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 the spoken word, the, 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 the rhema, the now word of God, the spirit of the Lord, the spoken word of God from his mouth to your life would bring joy unspeakable and full of glory. So until we have joy unspeakable and we are so full of glory that the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea, there is more. Mm. Ho, 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 ho. 
I'm telling you in advance, I might need a designated driver to get home today. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, hey. Yes. We've had numerous services where people have left the service and got pulled over. And the officer thought they were under the influence of, of, of strong drink, of, of, of liquor, of alcohol, of wine. And they said, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are not drunk as you suppose, but we've been to a place, hallelujah. And we tasted the wine. And now we, and, and when the wine got in us, the wine began to flow through us, hallelujah. You see, Jesus said in John 7, he said, if anybody's thirsty, let him come to me. And out of your heart. <laughs> will flow rivers. And see, God is not limited to rivers of water, but rivers of wine. Rivers of wine and rivers of oil. In the book of Job, Job 29, hallelujah. Everybody, nobody likes to read Job. I love Job. Because Job points to the glory on the other side of suffering. Joy is about recompense and not what's been done to you, but what's being done for you. And he said the rock poured out rivers of oil. <laughs> yes I love the river I was made for the river you were made for the river you were made for the river and the river it says in Ezekiel 47 flowed from the throne from the place of his lordship in the earth, out of the temple, out of the tabernacle, toward the east. Sorry, West Coast. Hallelujah. You'll get the wave. <laughs> and it says, wherever this river went, because see, a river is not meant to stay still. A river is meant to go places. You see, if, 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 it's, if it's not moving, it's a, it's a lake. It's a pond. It's a, sometimes a puddle. Hallelujah. But it was made to be a river. It was ma he desires one drink in you to become a river through you. Just one sip, just one taste can become a river. Just one moment in the glory of God. One moment in the presence of God Almighty, the creator of the universe, can not only transform you, but it can transform everything around you. And it says, wherever this river went, there was life. There's so much talk and there should be about pro-life, but I wanna tell you, pro-life is pro-river. Real pro-life. Real, real pro-life because when somebody in a situation where they've eaten fruit from the wrong tree and believed a lie, the only thing that's gonna set them free is not gonna be a sign or a protest or a picket. It's gonna be the real Pentecost experience to where all of a sudden they find life and they recognize the joy in being life, having and enjoying life to the full and then reproducing that life in someone else. It says wherever this river went, there was life. Life, 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 life. And the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. It said in John 6, 63, Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. They were not just heard, but they were felt. And they brought heaven into earth in the hearts of those who heard him. Wherever this river goes, there's life and an exceedingly great catch. An exceedingly great, great catch. That means wherever this river goes, people encounter him. And they come out of darkness into the kingdom of light. Exceedingly great catch. Exceedingly great harvest. Evangelism that's not trying to have a a, a, a mental argument or to connect with someone's head, 
But when the power of God flows through your hands, it begins to transform their heart. And then you're not trying to talk them out of a belief. You're simply bringing them into a reality. Holy Spirit is the joy of the Lord. Holy Spirit is the joy of the Lord. Holy Spirit is the joy of the Lord. That's why Jesus could say when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he will give you power. See, the joy of the Lord is strength. Strength, strength, supernatural empowerment. In Acts 1.8, when he said when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, to give you power, that word was dunamis. It's, where we, it's, it's the Greek word dynamo, hallelujah. It's where we get our word dynamite. Where my J.J. Walker fans at, dynamite. And see, you don't need a whole lot of dynamite to make a difference. And the Holy Spirit just needs a crack in your door to change everything. Mm-hmm, hmm Yep. Yep. Mm. Oh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Mm. You've heard the term dynamic duo. It comes from dunamis. It's when two people get together and all of a sudden they can accomplish so much more together than they could apart. You and the Holy Ghost are a dunamis dynamic duo. Forget Batman and Robin, hallelujah. Forget Starsky and Hutch, hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. And when you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, what else do you need? And a lot of times we, we can spend time focusing on the outcome or the result of having a spirit-filled or spirit-led life. What it could potentially produce in our life. But if, if, if you'll spend more time with him, those things will come to you. And a lot of times we're trying to accomplish the Christian life apart from Christ. Because Christ just simply means the anointed one and his anointing. Amen? And I'm so thankful for the anointed one. Mmm. And he's more than just the healing of the body or the the opening of prison doors. He is the what you want, baby, I've got it. Whatever you have need of, it's in the oil. It's in the anointing. The anointed one and his anointing. And when Jesus came into your heart, he brought his anointing with him. How many of you are feeling a manifestation, even the anointing in your hands? Some of you may feel oil, some of you may see oil in your hands. Some, I, I typically get electricity. I, 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 typically ha, like I, I typically feel things more flowing through me than seeing things on. How many of you are... See, when you begin to recognize what the Lord is doing or how he's moving on you, and you begin to not just be aware, but to embrace, it increases. Let me ask you this. How many of you feel something even in your hands right now? Go ahead and stand up and feel something in your hands. It, yeah, it hopes is, are you serious? <laughs> Some of you can't stand, hallelujah. This is where a kickstand comes in handy, hallelujah. How many of you, you don't feel something in your hand, but you feel a, a, a weight, not an oppressive weight, not something that would push you down in a wrong way, but you just feel like the Holy Spirit, like a blanket on you. See, ha, 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 ha. If so, stand up. I'm going to just begin to identify some manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And what we're going to see is as we begin to acknowledge what he's already doing, what he's doing will increase. 
And typically, not only does what he's doing increase, but he does a little bit more. Hallelujah. He's like, oh, you like that? Let me give you this. <laughs> and oftentimes, it feels like a blanket coming on your shoulders or on your chest. Oftentimes, I'll feel wings on, on the side of my, like, I'll feel like the brushing of almost like feathers on the side of my face. And I want to tell you, listen, the, some of, ooh, Man, I was getting ready to bring an explanation of an, of, of an expression, an experience there, but all of a sudden he began to express himself in a new way. How many of you are feeling even a tingling on the back of your head right there? Yep, Erica just got it. See, because I want to give you understanding of what he's doing so you don't just leave going, wow, I felt that, but you can begin to flow in it. And oftentimes people will feel almost like a, like a blanket on him. And didn't Jesus say he's the comforter? <laughs> Come for those who mourn. Console, console, console. That word console doesn't mean pass the tissue. It means to set back in place as, as, as to set a broken bone. And a lot of times we're just wanting to give someone, all of a sudden we see somebody and the Lord begins to move. This is why I'm so anti giving somebody a tissue in the midst of an encounter. Because a lot of times we can interrupt when the Lord begins to move on them and they begin to cry or they begin to snot bubble. Hallelujah. We, 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 we go to a way that seems right, but it's wrong. And it actually can interrupt what the Holy Spirit's doing. Now, how many of you are feeling that tingling on the back of your head right there? See, he, he, we, we see we get renewed in the what? Spirit of our mind. And what's happening is some of you where you've almost felt this control on you trying to manipulate the decisions you make from a fear of loss or a fear of missing him. That thing's coming off. It's coming off. It's coming off. That's what that is right there. That's what it is right there. And so, Lord, right now, I bless, I bless, I bless. And so right now, I just felt electricity coming from the right ear down the side of the face. How many, who is that? Just, if that's you, if you're feeling just almost, and it's almost like an electricity in your face, and then I just felt it on, on my, my neck on the left side. See, what's happening is not just is he manifesting himself on us, but he's also healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's he opening the right ear right now. There's people here that have had hearing problems with the right ear. Even as I said that, you may not have felt it yet, but you can step into your healing. You can begin to say, I don't have it yet, but my, my gosh, I need that right ear to become unstuck, unstopped. Hallelujah. Because he is unstoppable. He is unlimited. He is un, uh, he, 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 there, there, there is no limit to what he can do. He's just looking for someone to believe. Those of you who felt the anointing come on the left side of the neck, I, I would, I would, I would, I would, I wouldn't necessarily. I don't want to use the word bet because then it'll offend some of you, not me. But what's happening is some of you have had even almost kind of like an issue in your neck and in your shoulder on the left side, to where it's been this, it's been this reoccurring pain where you feel like almost like a stab in the back under your left shoulder blade, and it's it's permeated right there. It's permeated up into the neck on the left side, but the but but what's happening is he's literally bringing you out so that he can bring you in. You see, it says in Isaiah ten twenty seven that that the the, the burden would be removed and the yoke would be destroyed. And a lot of times we try to remove the yoke, but he wants to destroy the yoke. And the way that we get the yoke destroyed is by yoking up with him. Jesus said, if anybody's tired and weary and heavy laden, come to me, yoke up with me. I, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And oftentimes what he's doing is he's, I, he's, he's revealing to us areas that we've done all we can do in our own strength and we're no better. Like the woman with the issue of blood. We did all of the right things, but it's not producing the righteous results. And in that place, he's just saying, hey, listen, there's a yoke of iron on your neck. There's a yoke of iron on your neck. And if you will come to me, you'll come under a easy yoke and your burden will be light. And that's not light in terms of weight. It literally means that you begin to release the light of the Lord Jesus everywhere you go and everything you do. Right now, he's beginning to move even on the small, uh, not the small, but the middle of the back, like right like across to where your kidneys were, uh, are. And it's, it's that place where you've been, you've been, you, you've been carrying something that was heavy and this season has been hard. And what he's saying is, I'm yoking, I'm yoking you and burdening you in a right way, a righteous way for this season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. 
Mm, hey, ha, 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 ha. Hey, 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 hey. Amer, 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 Amer. Merry heart, merry heart, merry heart. Does good, does good like medicine. Mm, 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 mm. And you don't have to take two of these and call anybody in the morning. You can take one drink. One drink. One drink. One drink. And every sign and symptom of reoccurring sickness can leave your life today. Mary, 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 Mary. I bless hearts to be made merry in Jesus' name right now. That's it. That's it. It says in Proverbs, wine makes merry. I'm not talking about, about wine by natural grape. Ephesians 5.18 5, says, do not be drunk with wine. Do not drink to excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we allow, especially in our Western world, we allow a counterfeit to simply numb the pain instead of bringing us into the promise. Hallelujah. Instead of recognizing, wait a minute, the devil's tried to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm not just going to take two ibuprofen for this headache, but man, listen, I'm going to see a sevenfold payback to where I can begin to think the thoughts of Jesus. I can begin to walk in the ways of Jesus, that the peace of God would guard my heart and my mind. Hallelujah. Mm hmm. Ha 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 ha. Drink. 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 I'm not telling you to, I'm inviting you to. It's not mandatory, it's not compulsory. You don't have to. Again, the, the, the king's drinking laws. Hallelujah. But each man, each woman can have as much. As much, as much, as much, as much as your heart <laughs> desires. Why? Because a merry heart. How much does your heart desire? Mm. Mm. How, 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 ha, 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 hey, hey, if you're visiting, welcome. Mm, 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 mm. How much? How much? How much? Mm. How much? How much of the river do you want to wade into? You see, because the river begins ankle deep. And a lot of people can get in ankle deep. <laughs> they can step in and, ooh, that's refreshing. Hallelujah. But how many want to go knee deep? Mm. How many want to go waist deep? Ha, 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 ha. Which is typically, again, when the people with the fear of tomorrow say, why this waste? Why this waste? Why this waste? Why this waste? Because the river's is waist deep. Hallelujah. And then it says it goes from ankle deep, one level of glory, to knee deep, another level of glory, to waist deep. And see, all of a sudden, when things get, get, get waist deep, all of a sudden, that's, you're like, okay, I'm losing control. Because when I was ankle deep, I could, I could still high step out of here if I had to. I could still tell the missus to grab your purse, we're out of here. 
But all of a sudden, when it gets to your knees, they begin to buckle. And I am a believer that in, in, in the truth that we have to be able to, to stand in the anointing to be able to give the anointing away. But also there's times when the anointing and the presence and the power and the glory of God will just put you on your face. And the dedication of Solomon's temple, they took up an offering and, the, and God responded by filling the temple with a glory that put everyone on their face. Mm. And see the river progresses. Because once you get up to the waist, all of a sudden what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> when you go to the beach and you get in waist deep, you're, that's, a, that's a commitment. Because now if you sit on the sand, you're going to get hallelujah. <laughs> then it goes up to your shoulders. And before you know it, you're in over your head. <laughs> and wherever this river of water goes, there's life. And a lot of times what limits us from having and enjoying the abundant life of Jesus is what's in our head. And where the thoughts of our head have taken our feet and our ankles and our knees and our waist. But what you're doing is you're saying, I'm all, 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 ha, 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 I'm all in. Ha. Mm. I'm all in. I don't want to live from the ankle. I don't want to live from the knee. I don't want to live from the waist. I want to be fully consumed. And I'm thankful for the river of water, but what happens when you get into the river of wine? See, because sometimes if somebody's been at the beach, you can, you can smell the ocean on them. You can smell that salt. But listen, you get, you get dumped in some, some, some vino, hallelujah. You walk into a room, people are going, where have you been? And there's a fragrance of fullness. And it begins on the inside, but it's to be experienced on the outside because you're not really full until you overflow. Mm. God, I thank you for the <laughs> River of water. But Lord, we want to, we want to, we want to, we want to, ha, 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 we, we, we want to see the river of water turn in. The first miracle of Jesus when he manifested his glory was to turn the water. Whoa. That angel of joy just showed up. He's on my, right behind me. I feel him. I want to see the water. See, Jesus told him at the wedding, he said, take six pots. Why? Six is the number of man. Put water in it. And then as you draw out the water, take it to the master of the feast. And see, it's when the water of his word comes in us and then it begins to be drawn out. See, when we begin to pray the word, we live by the word, we're obedient to walk out the word, that we recognize that when it's in the word, it's not up for debate. <laughs> the word is always relevant, regardless of what your circumstance says. It is sent, woo. Mm. Mm. Just put your hands out. What you're doing, you're saying, I'm available. See, there's times when you can recognize what God is doing and it changes your posture. But I've also found out over the years, if I'll change my posture, I can actually assume a position. I'm not presuming on God and I'm not faking it till I make it. I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going through the, a past manifestation looking for a present demonstration, but I can recognize there's certain things that I've done in times past when the anointing showed up that when I begin to even outwardly begin to partner in that way that what I'm doing is I'm saying, I, I'm available. I'm making room. I have an expectation. I have an expectancy. I have a present expectancy because of what I've seen you do in times past. And even as you just put your hands out, how many of you begin to feel them in your hands? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making the water of your word in us, the wine of your spirit through us.
Mm. God, I thank you, Lord, for the new wineskins, the new mindskins that have even been formed and fashioned and even stretched in this past season, even in our vision series, Lord, that you're giving us new wineskins. You're stretching us, that you're, you're saying the, the old way of seeing, the old way of thinking can't hold the new thing I'm doing. Ha, 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 ha. And God, I thank you for the new wine. It says in Isaiah 65, 8, new wine is found in the cluster. <laughs> That's why when 120 men and their families got together in an upper room, See, when you get a bunch of people in a tight space, stuff happens. New wine is found in the cluster. The cluster, the coming together. Mmm. Mmm. And if there is a chair between you and the person next to you, just slide over. Everybody just slide over. I know that sometimes people like to have their... Their, their separation seat and their little elbow. I get it. Your purse wants a chair. But I just want to tell you, when the anointing is on you and you get next to somebody with the anointing on them, the anointing begins to increase. Ha uh-huh. New wine is in the cluster. New wine, new wine, new wine, new wine, new wine for a new time. New wine, new wine, new wine. Come on, Pastor Jonathan sang it. You make all things new. We see, we sing it, we sing it, we sing it, but we gotta see it. Hallelujah. And you don't see it until you taste it. Come on, don't just have one grape and one grape. Hallelujah. That's how you become a raisin. Hallelujah. That's where gossip comes from. I heard it on the grapevine. Come on, don't just get together in twos. Just begin to just just really get tight. Just tighten up on each other. Hallelujah. Come on, I know it's, I know it's terrible for the, the video and the media guys and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not, I'm not here for a production, hallelujah. I'm not here for how things look. I'm here for what it... Hey, new wine, new wine, new, 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 new wine, new ma, new wine. New ma. New wine. New ma. Mm. And ha- oh. ha- come on, new wine. New ma. And Jesus in John seven, he it, he didn't say, hey, if anybody wants more of what I have, come come to me and think. He said, come and drink. And I'm thankful that God has given us a mind. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that he's given us intelligence, but sometimes human reasoning can keep you from prophetic revelation. And when you feel your mind trying to kick in and say, why, why, why do I have to do this? Why is he telling me this? I don't want to do this. Why this waste? That is, that, that is, you're recognizing the thing in you that is working against the fullness of him. And if you'll break up with why, why do I have to and, and make it, I, okay, I'm, go, I'm just going to, hallelujah. And again, I'm not trying, like, I, again, it's, it's, it's not mandatory, but I would suggest everybody just slap together, hallelujah. Just slap together, just slap together, just slap together, slap together. So, shaka, slap, because new wine is in the cluster, and it says there's one, Isaiah 65, 8, there's, there's one who says, do not destroy it for the blessing is in it. And what I wanna do today is I wanna tell you that there's been all kinds of things that have tried to work against his wine in your life. And I'm here to say there's a blessing in the wine. <laughs> Cameraman down. Yes, please catch the camera. Thank you, hallelujah. That was amazing. Good job, Jason James. Hallelujah. This is also when people spontaneously get delivered in a beautiful way. Hallelujah. This is when people all of a sudden, they they get, they, 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 they experience even unexplainable touches and healings. Hallelujah. Not just of their bodies, but of their hearts and of their heads. Hallelujah. It's moments like this that all of a sudden cause entire worlds to shift. Ways of thinking. That's it. 
Keep yielding to it, Miranda. Keep yielding to it, Miranda. Come on, come on. When he begins to move on you, when he begins to move on you, when he begins to move on you, don't try to hold it together. Don't try to pull it back. See, Holy Spirit is a person with emotions and we're told to not grieve Holy Spirit. Do not grieve Holy Spirit. How do you grieve him? When you resist, when you restrain yourself, when you, when you pull back, do not grieve Holy Spirit. Because he's not a what, he's a who. He's, he's, not, he's not just something, he is someone. He is God in you. He is God for you. He is God with you. He is God on you. He is God on you and he has God on you. <laughs> That's it. Yield to it, yield to it, yield to it. Yield to it, yield to it. Yield to it, yield to it. Lightning rods, lightning rods, lightning rods. Water. 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 He who waters will himself be watered. But what happens when the water you get back is the wine from above? <laughs> hey! 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 Mmm. Mmm. What happens when he who waters is himself watered? Because that second word water means water from on high. The first word water is yara. The second one is raba. <laughs> raba. You see the first word water is, is, is as a man waters his garden. It's you giving away what you've got. The second word water is him pouring out what you need, hallelujah. In the Hebrew, it actually means rain, revelatory rain or the releasing of arrows. Arrows prophetically speak of promises and breakthrough. First Kings 13, Elisha told Joash, pick up the bow, take up the arrows. And the anointing did not come on him until he picked up the bow. He took up the arrows and then the anointing on Elisha came on the bow and he began to strike the ground with the arrows. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the deliverance from Syria goes forth from you. And what happens is it begins to do something in the third, it begins to do something in the second heaven from the third heaven that brings a breakthrough in the first heaven. That all of a sudden, and just simply partnering it, because because I'm sure that King Joash was like, I'm a king, I'm not an archer. I'm, I, I'm not even, I'm not supposed to pick up the bow and pick up the arrow. I'm supposed to, to tell the archers where to go and where to shoot and what to do. I've got, I've got people to do that. But the prophet said, take up the bow. The prophet said, take up the arrows, hallelujah. And he could have just said, I, I don't need to do that. I don't have to do that. But when he did something that honestly he thought was beneath him, he thought was foolish. <laughs> what is this gonna do? I'm, I'm, my, 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 my nation is surrounded. We've got an insurmountable force. We got, we're, we're surrounded by the enemy on all sides. What, what does one bow and a couple arrows do? But the arrows were promise. What he was saying was, if you'll begin to partner in the earth with the God of heaven, heaven will crash in. And even your enemies that have come against you will be turned against each other. And not only will it be the deliverance from what has come against you, but it'll be the deliverance from what has empowered the opposition, the principality that has worked through the personality. And he picked up the bow and he picked up the arrows and said he struck the ground three times, but there were still more arrows. And I said, the prophet was angry. See, he, he, this is old covenant. He didn't know about the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, if you had only struck the ground five or six times, you would have completely broken out. But because you only struck the ground three times, 
you'll have three victories, but ultimately you'll lose the war. And what he was saying is a lot of times people just do what's asked instead of saying, I'm gonna do more than what's asked because he's a more than God, amen. Sometimes, sometimes we'll say, okay, this, this, is, this is what I think could be appropriate for a Sunday morning expression. And if I really allow the way that God is touching me to, to bring me into anything more, what are people gonna think? <laughs> Let me remind you, I'm the one in charge. <laughs> like he's in charge, but I'm the one with the microphone and I will get more undignified than this, hallelujah. Don't make me untuck now. And see, a lot of times trying to remain dignified for those around us keeps us from the, the, the divinity of God that is touching us in the moment. Because you know what they're gonna think of you? How they think about everything will change if you get a hold of him. And so he, King Joash did just enough to kind of satisfy the requirement or what was asked of him. And Elisha was like, listen, if you were all in and went all out, <laughs> like you wouldn't even have to worry about the battle. You would already be, you would already be planning for the spoils. Mm. More, more Holy Spirit, more, 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 more. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh! Mm. And now it's not even a time to pray, it's a time to ask. You see, you pray until he shows up and then you receive your answers. Mm. More, more Holy Spirit, more, 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 all more. This is only ankle deep, by the way. Come on in, the water's fine. No, 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 come on in, the wine is finer. Fine wine. That's Tina's nickname, because she gets better with time, hallelujah. Rivers, <laughs> speaking of, rivers! Rivers. Rivers, mm. rivers, mm. rivers, rivers, rivers of water, rivers of wine. Mm. Rivers. <laughs> rivers, 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 rivers. Mm. Rivers, 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 rivers. I bless living ladders. I bless angels that are ascending and descending. I bless living lampstands. Mmm. Mmm. Rivers. Rivers. Ooh. Ooh, lightnings, lightnings. I bless lightning rods. Come on, if you can catch it, you can carry it. 
And it's not just the lightning to you. It's the, when, when the lightning hits you, it lightens what's been on you. It's, it's, it's what takes a heavy and oppressive yoke and brings you into a yoke that's easy. It's what takes the heavy burden and it makes it light. Lightning rods. Just begin to reach your hands to heaven. Just make yourself available for the lightnings of God. The flashings, the lightnings. Wow. The lightnings and the thunders. Mm, God of glory. Mm. God of... There it is. Get it, Sandy. Get it, 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 get it. What you're doing, you're saying, here am I, God. Here am I, God. Here am I, God. Get me and send me. Oh, shete. Baptize me with boldness, God. Mm, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Lightnings. Habakkuk 3, 4 says that from his hand, lightning proceeded because there the power was hidden. The electricity in the hands is increasing. Huh? Huh? And I'm going to give you some instruction and I'm going to count to three. Mm. Mm. And what you're going to do, when I count to three, you're going to put your hands on the person next to you. And you're not putting human hands. But when you put your hand, I want you as, as best you can to not think about it with your head but to let it flow from your heart because your head will say, okay, am I doing this right? And oftentimes that, that plan B will neuter what you're called to carry. Hmm. What happens when you begin to lean over, put your hand on and lean over, it's like I'm a little teapot, short and stout. <laughs> Here is my handle. Here is my spout. And, and see, the thing is, right now you're, un, you're under his spout, which makes you his spout. You're under his spout where the glory comes out. See, as you are receiving from him, he wants to release through you. And what you're doing, you're saying, God, I'm... I, you're pouring in and my cup is overflowing, hallelujah. So I'm just going to partner with the overflow and, and, and I'm gonna to begin to tip out. I'm gonna to begin to give away what I've got. And when, it, and, and when you begin to tip, watch the, there's almost, it's like, it's like a roar of redemption inside of you. It's a roar that brings recompense. It's a groaning that cannot be uttered like in Romans 8, 26. And what you're gonna to begin to start feeling is you're gonna to begin to start feeling a sound in your spirit, man, beginning to come up almost like a growl. And when I say that, like it's, 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 a, it's a righteous, like a, like a, like a lion. It's, a, it's like a, like a lion, like, like, I mean, like there's strength. And it's, it's what it is, it's the king of the jungle, the king of the universe, the king of glory, making himself known saying, I am here. I am here and I'm bringing everything into order. A lot of times we use divine in an order more about what people don't do. <laughs> Holy Spirit does everything decent and in order. What Holy Spirit does is when he begins to be poured out, of course, it says in Joel 2, 28, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And that is the same word vision for without it, people perish. They cast off restraint. Old men will dream dreams. Talk about everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And we are in an outpouring of a Holy Spirit. And that's part of why we
we've been talking so much about vision that we would not become a lake or even a puddle, but we would recognize that a vision is going somewhere that I'm not just getting in my now, but it's making way for my next. One, two, three, hey! Hey! Oh! Poor, 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 yes! Mm. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, come on, come on. This is when things that are stuck get unstuck. Michael Mitchell, this is when houses that haven't sold all of a sudden get sold. This is when, when all of a sudden areas where you've been capped in the natural, you get uncapped because the breaker begins to go through. He begins to break out. He begins to go for you and you just simply go where he's going. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Thank you for the river. And that was a that was a that was a nice little river of water. Hallelujah. Some of you are like, is he going to teach? Listen, I've got I've got one, I've got a 19-page outline on the 42 uh, characteristics and the names of the Holy Spirit. I got a 36-page outline in addition to the notes that I just got this morning. When, when the oil, when the the angel of joy came, I got a 36-page outline. I said, guys, we're just going to do a podcast this week. Hallelujah! <laughs> to get all this stuff out. But I want to tell you, we needed an experience, then an explanation, to become an expression. Amen. Now in that place of continuing to receive, and I know that some of you probably put, may have put hands on left and right, but you may have leaned a little bit more to the right than the left. And this isn't a formula, he's a father. But what we're doing is it's a show and tell, amen? He's showing, we're doing, and then we teach others how to do what we've done, amen? That's equipping. And so now on the count of three, you're, you're going to lean into whether it's the other side or, 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 or you let your river go this way. Now it's time to let it go that way. And see the first installment, that was a river of water. And listen, water is good. I love water. You give a cup of water to a thirsty man, man, listen, hallelujah. He's your best friend. Mm. He's your best friend. But you give him wine, oh, he ain't going nowhere. So on the count of three, we're gonna redirect our river of water as a river of wine. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To the other, the other side. If you already got everybody to your left and right, you can go front and back, hallelujah. It's a river flowing deep and wide. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, verse 14 verses talk about the blessing of obedience. And in verse 47 and 48, he says, because you did not serve the Lord. And what we're doing is we're, we're, we're simply serving up. There's gold, how, many, how is the world wine served? In golden vessels. You are the golden vessels <laughs> with royal wine in abundance. He said, because you didn't serve the Lord with joy and gladness for the abundance of everything. And he goes through a list of the things that they were gonna enter into. Nakedness, not the good kind of nakedness, hunger, all of these things with a yoke of iron. And how many know there's a lot of if then statements in the Bible? And if you don't like your then, change your if. And so for them, it was a curse that came with disobedience because, you know, choices have consequences. He said, but, so when I, I remember years ago, Bob Jones, one of my spiritual fathers, he and I were talking in his living room one day and he was talking about the importance of ministering with joy and gladness for the abundance, even when you don't see it. 
living from the fulfillment of your promise when you're in the first stages of your process. (laughs) And see, a lot of times what comes on us is because of what we've thought we needed instead of living from what we have. And so if not serving, giving away what you've got with joy and gladness for the abundance results in lack, that means that if you serve the Lord, if you steward what you've got with joy, with say with joy Joy. and gladness, that then the abundance that you believe for will begin to flow through you. See, and a lot of times we're believing for abundance to us. He's wanting abundance through you because that's not a one-time miracle that meets your needs. You're hooked up to the source and there is no lack. There is no lack with joy and gladness. In Hebrews 1.9, we see that Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy. It says he was anointed with the oil of joy and gladness more than his companions. And there is an oil of joy in that encounter I had this morning where I got a third, and I can't wait honestly for this podcast because I mean, like I, because that, that 36 pages I got today will be 72 by Tuesday. Trust me, hallelujah. Because I know where he's at, he's with me. And it's not about an increase of information. Information is to bring us into encounters. But I recognize he was highlighting that if we will begin to live and to minister and to serve, serve the Lord, serve those around us with joy and gladness for the abundance of everything, that everything you have need of will come crashing into your life, that goodness and mercy and favor and grace and joy and peace and heaven's abundance will find you And oftentimes what we're seeking for will find us when we seek him. And so we're gonna redirect our rivers on the count of three and go from the water to the wine. But here's what I want you to do. I want you with joy and gladness to serve that wine to others. Recognizing you're not giving for a touch, you're giving from a touch. You're not saying I'm posturing myself so God will. I'm positioning myself because he's already said. And if he said it, bless God, I know I'm gonna see it and that settles it. (laughs) You ready to go from from, from from the water to the wine? God, I ask for the John two glory, the wedding, the wedding and I ask for the cane of glory, the cane of glory, the cane of glory. That's it, Jim. That's, come on, that's it, Mike. See, some of you are beginning to shift because you recognize, wait a minute. Some of you, even like you're feeling drawn to certain parts of the room or even certain people. I feel this all the time. Oftentimes, even in a meeting, it's not praying for the first one or even praying for everyone. It's praying for the one that becomes a catalyst. And all of a sudden, you, when you pray for that one, it becomes a match and all of the other wood gets caught on fire. It's beginning to recognize what I call the dancing hand of the Lord. Where is the spirit of moving? And then you move there. You move there. You move there. See, because a lot of times we want to move a God and God is moving. We just got to move with God. We got to move with God. Sometimes that means you got to get up from your favorite seat. Sometimes that means that you got to lay aside your Sunday blanket. Hallelujah. Say, God, if you're doing a new thing, I'm going to move in a new way. Cana, Cana, Galilee, taste, see. Mm. I bless your pots. I bless the six pots. I bless in the same way that Jesus spoke of those stone pots, because stone pots speaks of humans with hard hearts, and you're not those, hallelujah. You have soft hearts, you have pliable hearts but he was speaking to those who have been through a hard season and have been made hard in the process. And when the water was poured into them and they had something to give away to others, it brought a merry heart to the entire feast. Hallelujah. And not only that, but Jesus, Jesus manifested his glory that day to keep the, 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 the bride and the groom and their families from what would be perceived as shame from not preparing enough for the party. 
And I'm gonna tell you, it says instead of your shame, he'll give double honor. Instead of confusion, everlasting joy will be yours. And in your land, you will possess double. And God is showing up to, 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 to separate you from the shame of where you've been and the disappointment of what's been done to you to say, listen, I'm here and I've got more than enough. On the count of three, send those rivers of water into rivers of wine and begin to give away what you've got. One, two, three, yay! Come on, 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 come on. Wine and it's time. Hallelujah. Mm, new year. New year. 2024 is a good year. Good year. Good year. Good, good, good year. Good. Good. Good year. Good, good, good year. James 1 says, from the Father of light, every good and perfect gift comes in whom there is no turning. He turns toward you and never turns away from you. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Heart. Heart. Isn't it interesting that, that God put an ear right in the middle of heart? You can't spell heart without ear. Ha. Ha. And right now, even with some of the things that, have, that you've heard with your natural ear that have hindered your heart, God is, God is breathing on your new ear for a new year. Hallelujah. Some of what you've heard with your ears has, has brought you into the captivity of your mind. It said in Psalm that, that, that Joseph's mind entered into captivity because he was in prison so long. His hands were in fetters, fetters. His, his, his feet were in iron, and his mind entered into captivity until the king sent and released him. And I declare today that you are released, hallelujah. I declare today that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon us to proclaim liberty to the captives. Opening, 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 opening of prison doors. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. He is upon me to declare to you today that this is the year of God's favor. This is the year of every good and perfect gift coming to you and through you in abundance. This is the year of joy, 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 joy. Joy is the anointing for 2024. Joy, joy, the oil of joy, the anointing of joy. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing the smearing of God upon you. The rubbing, to anoint means to rub or to smear, hallelujah. Rub, smear, shayakata, ya ha 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 ha. Yeah, 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 oil on the head, oil on the head. Oil on the head, oil on the head, oil on the head, oil on the head, oil, oil, oil. Mm. Rivers, ha, 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 ha. Increase. Ooh, I think we just got to knee deep, hallelujah. Hey! Knee deep in the wine. Knee deep in the vine. Mm, 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 mm. Ha, 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 the funnest year ever. Your funnest year ever. The fun, have and enjoy, have and enjoy. Have, 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 have and enjoy. Have and enjoy, have. <sighs> See, his presence is a clear separation from the haves and the have nots, but the have nots are gonna come to the haves. Those who have, 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 you have, <laughs> have, 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 what 
what, 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 what we have, ha ha. What did Peter and John say at the gate, beautiful? What we have, we give you. See, the lame man wanted gold, he wanted silver, he wants some money. But he needed what they had. And everything else you've sought is not what you need. It may be part of what God desires, but there's more. There's more. There's more. 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 Ha ha. More, 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 more. More. Hey. More. More than. Mm. More than. 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 Ooh, 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 ooh. Gotta make a beeline. I gotta be. Shaka ba 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 ba. Oh, oh, more than, more than, more than, more than, more than, more than. Yeah, where's Denise? I got I just Denise was just highlighted. Hallelujah. Sha ta 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 ta. More than, more than, more than, more than, more than, more than, more than. More, 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 more. Not less than, not just enough, but more than, more than, more than, more than. More than, more than, more than, more than, more than, more than, more, more. Don't settle for less. You're called to more. Don't settle for less. You're called to more. Don't settle for less. More, more. Ha, ha, ha. More, more, more. Mm, see, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us uncaps the greatness of his power in us. More. Mm. More, 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 ha, 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 ha. Wow. Crown us, crown us. Loving kindness, tender mercies, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Isaiah 28 says the Lord would be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to a remnant that sits in the gates. To those who turn back the battle at the gates. That word gates there is actually the Hebrew word think. Those of you who have had just a, a level of mental warfare that you've done everything you can to stand and stand there for. There's a spirit of justice, 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 justice. And it's, it's an oil that comes on the head, but it moves through the hips. Hallelujah. I just bless the oil to begin to move through the hips, even, to, even right now, to begin to flow from the hands. Thank you, Jesus. Even where you, even where you felt hurt in a season of wrestling and an in-between season, just like Jacob was touched in the socket of his hip and he limped, I'm thankful that we don't have to limp any longer. I thank you that even in the wrestlings, even in the wrestlings, even where we carry a present mark of a past moment, God, I thank you that in that place, God, that you're healing and making whole so we can begin to step up and step out. Oh, sha, ya, ha, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, 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 more, 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 more. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, that's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yep. And Nathan, as soon as I touched you, I saw it was like one of those like speak and says, like the pull and says, like, like a child's toy where you pull the cord and then you let it go. And whatever it's pointing at, it makes the sound of what it pointed at. And I just even just see you right now, even in the areas where the Lord is pulling on your spirit, even today, that all of a sudden you're going to begin to make the sound of the one that you look at because you begin to look like. I begin to bless, I bless the sound of victory. I bless even where there's been a voice of defeat, even where you've said things about what had happened to you, that this would be all about what God desires to do through you. I bless the new sound. I bless the new direction. I bless the new angle. I bless the arrow, the arrow, the arrow, the arrow, the arrow, the arrow. I bless the flight, the flight, 
the flight, where there's, even where there's been fight, I see the flight right now. Even where there's been quarrel and even an inward and an outward struggle, I see, an, I see all of a sudden it being replaced with a completely different posture, and it's all about the ear. I see the ear right now being made brand new, 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 brand new. Hey, 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 hey. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, 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 hey. Mm, 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 Hallelujah. Speaking of Jacobs, we blessed a new birth. Hallelujah, God. We're thankful. Thankful, Lord. There's a new Briscoe arrow in the quiver. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm, hmm, 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 hmm. Mm, ha, 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 ha. Yes, yes, yes. More, 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 more. That's it. More, 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 more. More, 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 more. I bless the more to go through. Hallelujah. See some, so, ha, 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 ha. Hey, hey, hey. Refreshing, 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 refreshing. Mm, mm. See, sometimes people think they need to get prayed for. I've seen more happen when someone prays from a right place than when they get prayed for from a righteous man. When you align, when you align with truth and you allow his touch to flow through you, it's not meeting a need in you, but it's completely removing the need from you. Hallelujah. Oh, shayakata. Yes, 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 yes. Mm, yes. Oh, karakata rakabasata. Yes. Oil on the feet. Job 29, 6. My boots were bathed with butter, and the rock poured out rivers of oil. Nike, just do it. Just do it. I heard a friend, a friend of mine give a prophetic word for this new year, and it was a word that he gave me 20 years ago. And it was the, that this was the year of the Hooper Nikes. Romans 8, 37 says, you are more than a conqueror. And the Greek word for more than a conqueror is Hooper Nikes. Super conqueror. What has tried to conquer you, you will have conquest because of the anointing. And I want to tell you, this is the year of being more than a conqueror. That what you've come against, not only will you overcome, but all of a sudden you're going to begin to shatter it because when the God of glory breaks through, he doesn't just break out, but it says he splinters. I bless the splintering of everything that has come against you because when something's broken, it can be put back together, but when it's splintered, it can never be put to get back together the way it was. And even the Plans of the enemy against this nation are being splintered in this season. They're being obliterated. They're being demolished. They're being destroyed, not in a way to bring destruction, but to bring redemption and reconstruction, recalibration, to bring unity where there's been division, to bring wholeness where there's been lack, to bring healing where there's been sickness, and to bring freedom because those who know the truth they know the truth. They know the truth. Not just have heard it, but they've been intimate with the spirit of truth. Jesus in John 16, 13, called the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will tell you of things that are to come. God, I thank you for what's coming. I thank you for what's coming. God, I thank you for what's coming. I thank you for what's coming. I thank you that these are gonna be our greatest days as a, as a church, as, the, as a body, as a nation, as, as people. I, I thank you for marriages. God, I thank you that the greatest is in front of us and not behind us. I thank you that the best wine is always saved for last. Hallelujah. And then Jesus goes on to say that the Holy Spirit will take what the Father has given to the Son, what the Father of glory has given to the King of glory, and he will give it to you. He will manifest it to you. He will show it to you. He would bring you into your inheritance. The Holy Spirit brings orphans into the family and begins to give away inheritance before they deserve it. Hallelujah. The inheritance is not something you grow into is something you're born again with. It's a seed of destiny that comes in you. Jesus said when he, the Holy Spirit has come, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance everything that I have spoken to you. I thank you, God, that you are not only the giver of all good gifts, but I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach us all things. 
I, I just even, I speak a regenerative anointing on cognitive abilities to be able to apprehend, to apprehend what Paul said, to apprehend the mystery of God in Christ Jesus, to apprehend the mystery of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us. We don't want to bring old patterns into a new season. We don't want to bring inherited behavior and beliefs into a new day. Teach us. He's a person. Holy Spirit is a person. He's here. He's walking among us. He's walking among us. And that angel of joy is here. Those angels showed up to the shepherds and said, we bring you good tidings of great joy. Joy, joy, good tidings. The Holy Spirit brings good tidings and he brings great joy. And all of a sudden when joy comes on you, even the areas you've been faithful and been fruitful, you become supernatural. I bless the acceleration. I bless, Samantha, I bless the acceleration. I bless the quickening, the quickening, the quickening, the quickening, the quickening, the acceleration. I bless more and less, more and less. One of the things that we've been talking about as a team is typically 20% of your actions produce 80% of your results. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is saying that the key in this season is not to try to do more, but to refocus on the few things he's calling you to do and to do them the absolute best you can for his glory. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lord, we even ask forgiveness for the way, the way that we focused on more, more of the what you do than who you are. Jesus said when he comes. He didn't say when it comes. And I thank you that you've come, Holy Spirit. But we want to make room for you to keep coming. Ankle's great. Knee is better. Waist is awesome. But we want you to come in a way that completely consumes us. Not just to we're in the river, but we become the rivers we were born to be. Mm, be the river. Be the river. Be the river. Be the river. In the days of harvest, the river overflows its banks. Be the river. Be the river. Thank you for the river of water. We thank you for the river of wine. But even before we leave today, God, we want to experience the rivers of oil. The rivers of oil. The rivers of oil. The rivers of oil. We were born for more. Uh, I'm going to call you Miss Moore. Good old Mrs. Moore, Eileen Vogel, Mrs. Moore, hallelujah. You were born for more. You were born for more. You were born for more. You're more than, 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 more, more, more than. More, ha, ha, ha. More, uka. I got you, girl. Mmm. Twenty twenty four, but it it begins now. February is a month of fullness. 
And that doesn't mean that March is anything less. It is glory to glory. This is a month of fullness, and it's only going to get more full. This 2024 is your year of more. 2024 is your year for more. Come on, God has circled this entire year to be your year for more. And I want to tell you, it's no mistake that here we are in 2024 seeing so many of the natural signs that accompany 2020 right down to the Super Bowl and right down to a leap year. And where some may have felt like that they leapt back in 2020, get ready to spring forth with joy. Get ready to be led forth with joy, to leap. This is a leaping year, leaping year, leaping year, leaping year, leaping year, leaping, 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 leaping. And where you've been reaping, you're about to start reaping. Psalm 126 says, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. So, I'm telling you, we're, you're going from a weeping to a reaping, but it's all because of the leaping. When Peter and John touched the lame man at the gate beautiful, they grabbed him by the right hand. He stood up. He began to walk, and then he began to leap. And as he began to leap, he began to praise God and enter into the temple. He began to enter into the tabernacle. And here's what we're going to do. Stan Sheridan had a special request this week. I want to honor him. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and we're going to receive our offering, but with the offering, we're going to release a river of oil. Hallelujah. Amen. And again, listen, the Lord is going to have to multiply our Sundays in this season. (laughs) And I know maybe a lot of what he told me is just for me, but man, I think it could help you too. So I don't know if we're going to be doing like a marathon podcast or what, but I'm so thankful for what God is saying to us prophetically, but also recognize that we have practical parts to play. How many of you recognize that? And if you don't like your then, change your if. He said, because we do not serve the Lord with joy and gladness for the abundance of all things, all of this other stuff has happened. So that tells me, if we change our if, and we determine this year to serve the Lord with joy, the primary emotion of the Holy Ghost and gladness. How do you get glad? You rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. Isn't that what David said? You can't rejoice and be sad at the same time. You cannot give thanks and worry at the same time. They've actually hooked people up to machines to track their brain waves, and they found out that thanksgiving and worry come from the same place in the brain, and that part of the brain cannot do two different things at the same time. And so if you determine in your heart a heart of joy, joy is a faith-based emotion and it's voice activated. If you make the choice to rejoice, and it's not always an easy choice, and oftentimes it's the most powerful when it's the hardest to do. When it feels the hardest to give praise and you praise them anyway, that's when walls come down. That's when gates begin to swing, swing open. But he said, rejoice and be glad. When you make the choice, rejoice means choose joy again. You can't help but be glad. And it said in Psalm 45, 7, he anointed us with the oil of gladness. The Holy Spirit is the oil of overflow. He is the fragrance of fullness. And you were born for more. In 2 Kings 4, we see a story about a a widow whose husband was a prophet and he served Elisha. And that prophet died and left his family with a, a, a really big debt that they could not pay. And sometimes life feels like that to where there's, we have more to do than we have time to do it. We have more month than we have money, we have more bills than we have, than we, but I wanna tell you, when you come into alignment, everything the Lord has been showing us this year is about if you, if you get aligned, like you just, it's, it's, it's just bringing the things you're called to carry into the right order, all of a sudden there's an acceleration. There's an oil that comes on alignment for your assignment. And her heart was out of alignment because again, her husband was a prophetic voice. Obadiah was her husband. Obadiah 121, of course, talks about the 
the deliverers that would begin to be released in the last days. And I actually believe that we as Kingsway Church, that we are we are part of the fulfillment in the decade of deliverance of what opened God prophesied thousands of years ago. And he talked about what would happen to cities and nations when deliverers or judges, depending on the translation you, 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 you use, stand in the right gate with God to give away what they've got, to bring things that are out of order into order. But her life was out of order. She had a debt she could not pay. They were going to come take her children. It's first mention of child trafficking. She came to the prophet and she said, hey, listen, my husband, your servant is dead. She was probably thinking if you had paid him better, how'd I leave you? We wouldn't be in this situation. He said, what do you want, to, what do you want me to do for you? And he didn't let her answer from need. He had to redirect her to her seed. What do you want me to do for you? What do you have in your house? She said, I got, I got nothing but this little jar of oil. Hallelujah. I just almost drank my microphone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I got less oil. I got nothing but this little jar of oil. And man, see, because back then oil was currency. And here's the thing is, you'll be amazed at the outcome of income that comes into your life when you align yourself right with God's anointing for your life. You'll be, you'll be a, a blown away by what the anointing could do because the anointing can do for you what you cannot do. And the truth is, the only way the, the, only way the anointing and the oil doesn't work for you is if you hold on to it out of fear of what's coming. And she held on to it because she's like, it's all I've got. It's all I've got. And I better hold on to it until I really need it. I've seen people with rainy day funds get a lot of rainy days, hallelujah. <laughs> and a lot of times what you plan for, you get. But if you plan for abundance, if you plan for increase, stretch out your 10 sticks and let them lengthen your cord. You'll be amazed at what God brings into your house. And so the prophet told her, he said, go to your neighbors and gather, who remembers it? Vessels, vessels. The way the Lord started this whole service, and again, this has been completely off script. As a team, we got together, we just said, we're gonna make February a month of spontaneity. We're just gonna, we're just gonna say, God, listen, we're gonna have a plan, but at the same time, we wanna, we wanna put that plan on the altar for you to do what you wanna do. And so he said, go gather vessels. We started the service off by talking about royal wine and abundance that were served through what? Golden vessels. You're a vessel. And what you've walked through in the fires has simply been, been to bring the thing in you that didn't look like him out so that he could bring you in. Go to your neighbors, gather vessels. And after you've gathered all the vessels, bring them into your home. Shut the door. And you and your sons begin to pour out the oil. And they did. They just had a little jar. And they got the vessels, brought them in. And I believe it was probably like the disciples with the two fish and the five loaves. Because the two fish and the five loaves were not multiplied from Jesus' hands to the disciples. He just broke apart two fish and small loaves and gave them to 12 people. And I could imagine like Peter and John and Tom, good old Thomas. Thomas was like, this is never enough. It was an unhappy meal. <laughs> and in their hands, it didn't look like enough. But then when they started to give it away, what they had didn't diminish. But somehow in the giving away, not only did it not get smaller, but it got bigger because each of them went from a couple breadcrumbs and a few small pieces of fish to each of them had a overflowing basket when it was all done and the 5,000 families, which is about 15,000 people conservatively, 12,500 to 15,000. Of course, back then they had a lot of kids, 25,000. And see, giving is never subtraction. It's always God's way of multiplication. 
to have an abundance for every good work. And joy and gladness is the recipe for abundance. It's a recipe for abundance. And so they began to pour out the oil. What was amazing was each of these vessels would be completely filled to the top, but the oil was still all present. And the more the oil they poured, they recognized they didn't lose any oil in the process. And it said that the oil did not cease. The anointing did not stop until they ran out of vessels. And I want to tell you the only thing, the only reason that they're still not pouring oil today is because they ran out of neighbors. They ran out of vessels. But we've got more than 8 billion vessels. All the creation has grown. Holy Spirit is what this world is seeking. And they've turned every other counterfeit other than him. But it's time for them to become, it's time for them to return to the real thing. In the same way that God spoke when the world was chaotic, he says the world was without form and void in Genesis 1.1. He spoke, let there be light. And the Holy Spirit went to work and he's not quit since. The Holy Spirit brings, brings God's word to pass in our life. And they came back and they told the prophet, they said, man, listen, we did what you said. It didn't make sense. We didn't know why we had to scoot next to the person next to us. We didn't know why we had to, I'm a little teapot short and stout, but we did it. We just decided to do it because what we've been doing ain't been working. So if we were to try something new, he said, go and sell the oil, pay your debts, and you and your sons live on the rest. And in one act of obedience, a little, little jar of, an oil, of oil, one little jar of oil, they went from a debt they couldn't pay to her being able to give an inheritance away to her sons. Her sons were about to be taken, but now they were going to be taken care of. And you've got nothing to worry about when you have the oil. Because when you have the oil, you don't need anything else. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. And what we're going to do, even with our offerings, Lord, show me years ago that even in the giving of gifts and the offerings, it's, it's, the, it's us exchanging what we have. Because again, for them, oil was a form of currency. Oil was a form of currency. And they were giving away their natural currency and the Holy Spirit not only multiplied it to meet the needs of their debts, but he gave them an abundance. And there's just something about the commanded blessing of the Lord on obedience. We know there's certain things that relate to scripture. There are certain things in scripture that relate to giving and that we're commanded to do. We're not, but also the Lord will speak to us personally, prophetically, and just say, hey, this is, this is what I want you to let go of in this season so you can lay hold of what I have for you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ask you today, you know, I've got my oil, you've got your oil. But we're gonna come up and we're gonna, we're gonna pour into these vessels. And I wanna tell you what you have will not diminish, it will multiply, it will increase. Obedience brings abundance. And then we're gonna begin to declare that we were born for more and as we worship together, we're gonna to finish off the service today with a river of oil. We're gonna have times of impartation. Trust me, I wanted to lay hands on everybody all day. But I want you to become the hands that are laid on others, amen? So we're gonna come, we're gonna give, we're gonna worship with hearts completely surrendered. And then I'm just gonna give you a few instructions on how we're gonna release that oil to others, amen? Come on down, let's worship the Lord in the giving as we declare we were born for more.
Come on, come on, declare this over yourself. Declare this. of like when the, when the women came to anoint Jesus after his death and burial, they didn't know about the resurrection. What do those angels say? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why, why are you looking for what I'm doing in the midst of what the devil's done? And I wanna tell you, there's a lot of things around us we could look at, but the problem is, is what you look at, ultimately you look like. And the more we look at him, the more we look to him, the more they will see him. 
I do wanna let you know that one of the things that we've done to, to more fully host the Holy Spirit this month is we're having a Holy Spirit Immersion Week. <laughs> we're going all the way in. February 13th through the 15th, we're opening up Kingsway College. And I know we use the term like preview week. This is more than that. It's, it's, I, it's actually on the anniversary of when the Holy Spirit showed up last year and made a three-day healing school, an eight-week outpouring that honestly, it, it was amazing. We saw so many healings and so many miracles and just creative miracles and people came from all around the country and it was great. But I believe there's more. And last year, 2023 was about what God supplies to us. And God supplies healing for the hurting. But this is a year about what God supplies through you. And so we're gonna be diving into the depths of the Holy Spirit. God willing, I'm gonna talk about some things that I've never talked about publicly. Some things that the Lord just said to hold on until the right time, it wasn't time yet. Some things that we talked about in the first four months we came to Birmingham and some other things that I've never talked about publicly just because the Lord is speaking to it, them to us in the present. But it's not a week of teaching, it's, it's a week of ex exploration, divine exploration. As we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, lead us into the depths of God. We do need you to RSVP for that. You can do it on, on the website. There's a link if you go to the events. And then also, speaking of immersion, how many of you know we have our water baptism coming up March 3rd? I know many of you have already said you want to get baptized. A lot of the folks who have recently joined Kingsway. And so be sure to sign up for that as well. And as we go forth from this place, I do want to say this. You know, Evan Roberts, how many of you know who Evan Roberts was? Okay. Evan Roberts was, of course, the young man that God used as a catalyst for the Welsh revival. And it's just always been a move of God that's really near and dear to my heart. It's connected to Birmingham, actually. He preached the four tenants on my birthday, November 2nd. But... Um, when the, when the Baptist church was bombed, do you know it was, the, it was a church in Wales that actually replaced the window? And they call it the Welsh window of Birmingham. Windows speak of seasons and time when God pours out the spirit. And I believe that there's even a, an inheritance that we have connected to the Welsh revival that one letter from Evan Roberts sent to William Seymour was the catalyst for the Azusa Street revival that all of us charismatics, of course, experienced, you know, have, have seen the fruit of. And so one of the things that somebody told Evan Roberts growing up is he said, never miss a prayer meeting because you don't know which one the Lord's going to show up at. He said, you may have to get yeah, 10 years, he, 13 years, 13 years. Probably felt like Joseph uh, in, in the in-between promise. And I've been to some bad prayer meetings. Has anybody else been to some bad prayer meetings? Some of y'all were there. Hallelujah. But he knew that he couldn't judge what was coming by what had come. So he just kept coming back. And the Lord showed up one night. And then after the Lord showed up one night, he said, this is it. This is it. We're going we're gonna to see. He had a vision. It was several hundred thousand people that they would see saved in 14 days. He said in a fortnight. That's how people spoke back then. He told his brother. And right after the Lord showed up the one night, they had two more weeks of really bad meetings. Now, how many of us would just on the, on the, by the third or fourth night, kind of like looking for the cloud the size of man's hand being like, well, that was a good one, but these are not, so we're not coming back. And I'm gonna tell you that this month, you don't know when he's gonna show up. I don't believe that the day of Pentecost, I don't believe that we, it was after 10 days of praying about a promise that those 120 were gloriously filled as the Holy Spirit came like a rushing mighty wind and set upon them like tongues of fire. It wasn't a wind and it wasn't tongues of fire. It was just, they didn't have anything in the natural to compare what happened in the spirit. But I think that, that I think it started a lot bigger and it got smaller as the days went on. But there was 120 that just said, we're not gonna go till he comes because they heard Jesus say, Stay here until you're endued with power from on high. So this entire month, and it's not just gonna be this month of Supernatural Sundays and Holy Spirit immersion, but there's something about not knowing when he's gonna show up, but just making sure that we're there for when he does. I wanna be the place that people are scared to come because of what might happen, but they're scared to not come because of what might happen. That was what they said about Jesus' house in Mark 2, 12. They said, man, we've never seen anything like this. And they kept coming back to see. 
And so why don't everybody just come up and grab a hand of the person next to you. I'm going to tell you how we're going to release this oil. And what you're doing by holding that person's hand is you're saying that I'm, I'm committing to walk this thing out. I'm committing to the oil. Because there's, there's a power in my hands that I haven't seen yet. But if my hand joins with your hand together, we will see. Because we really are better together. He sent him out what? Two by two. He didn't send him out one by one. In fact, the only time in scripture somebody went to walk, went to walk for themselves, all of humanity fell. None of us are called to do this together. But you need it when you're a well. Comes in contact with the well. Hallelujah. I'm so glad she had a chair behind her. That's so sweet. That was a, probably the hallelujah. All right, let me redirect it over here then. Stan, when your oil comes in contact with Laura's oil, man, Stan's oil plus Laura's oil, what does that look like? It's a beautiful blend of boldness. It's a beautiful expression of Jesus. And this year of 2024 supply is about the body being joined together so that what each and every one of us has, has opportunity to be released. And see the river of water, the water can refresh you. It brings healing. I love the water. I, lo I love a river of water. Man, the river of wine, that makes your heart merry. But the oil is for others. So how are we gonna see that river of oil? We're not gonna step out of the oil when we leave here today. But we're gonna take the waist deep water and knee deep wine, and it's only gonna get deeper this month in time. Deeper, deeper, deeper. I think it's really cool just even how the, the Sundays break out. We'll go ankle, knee, waist, and overhead by the end of February. But the way you grow in what you've got is by finding somebody else to give it to. Waiters and waitresses at the, at the, at the restaurant today, if you go to the grocery store, you know, hey, even the people next to you at that red light, you know, you know. I can just see some of y'all like the Cheshire cat, just like. I mean, sometimes just even like, like I'm not like, like naturally down the supernatural, but you'll be amazed at an opportunity that can come when you hold the door for somebody, when you speak a good word and you don't stop with the natural, but, but the natural opens them up to the supernatural because so many people are so focused on themselves, where I'm going, what I'm doing, right? But when you start living for others, watch how the oil flows. This week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there's so many opportunities. So many opportunities for the oil. Don't worry, I don't have COVID this time. So many, oil, so many opportunities. Sometimes when you're sick, you just gotta pretend like you're not, amen? Yeah. I, 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 mm. So many opportunities for the oil. Don't reserve your oil for Sunday. Your oil was made for Monday. It belongs in Tuesday. It'll overflow on Wednesday. And man, I can't even wait to see about what your oil does on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Your boots are already bathed with butter and the rock Jesus Christ has a fresh river of oil to pour out to and through you today and every day. Amen. The oil looks good on you. The helmet of the hope of salvation looks good on you. Hope is a helmet, man. And listen, I want to tell you, there has been a supernatural helmet of hope in this season. Keep it on. Because it's the God of hope that fills you with all joy, all peace, and believing again, that you would abound in hope by the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We love you. We bless you. Go give away your oil today to every person you come in contact with and watch God do something great. We love you. We bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.